Well, hello everyone. Hope all's doing good on this warm, rainy Saturday morning. On the bench, we have the ICO Model 324 signal generator. And this is one that I purchased from a company called Creative Salvage. And I showed it in a video several months back. I have somebody that is interested in this uh, particular generator. So, like I said, when I purchased these, I was going to restore them and then sell them. I already got a buyer for this one. So, we want to tear it apart today and go through it and get this thing working like it should be. And we got a little bit of cosmetic repair to do. Um, as you can see, the uh, case is filthy. I believe it'll clean up. We'll just have to try it to see. The front panel, the lettering looks good. There's not a lot of scratching or nothing going on with it. But uh, it is dirty. I don't think y'all can really see it in the uh, camera. But you notice you can see some uh, little white spots on it. <clears throat> now since this uh, lettering that's on this uh, generator is kind of engraved in in other words it's not just uh, printed on it's like it's engraved and it's sitting in there I believe we'll be able to take this and buff it without you know risking taking the uh, lettering off so we'll give that a try and to do that we'll have to take the uh, whole unit out of the case and then disconnect all the controls and desolder the uh, RF output jack and uh, also the audio input output jacks then we should be able to take the nuts off and just take this whole front panel off and go ahead and work on uh, getting that cleaned up so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to remove these eight screws and get this thing out of the case we now have the unit out of the case and uh, the inside of the case looks pretty decent. It's a little dusty. Need some cleaning up. No uh, rusting or anything. So maybe that case will clean up real good. There is, however, one other screw on the back. So it's a total of nine screws that holds this thing together. The uh, original line cord looks real good, but it's a non polarized cord. So we'll be replacing it back with the standard two wire cord but a polarized cord and you can see it has only two tubes in this unit 12 AU7 and a 12 AV7 tube um, this particular unit here will cover from about 150 kilohertz up to uh, 435 megahertz now from 150 kilohertz to about 145 megahertz uses fundamental uh, frequencies uh, everything above that is harmonic generated so it would be multiple outputs on it the signal on these things out is not as clean as you would want but it's fine for just testing or if you need to test stuff you're working on some AM uh, receivers it's a good little unit. It does have some modulation output. Uh, the RF output and the um, modulation output or culprits type of uh, oscillators that's used in this. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on here on the inside. We have our variable capacitor to set the frequency. We have a uh, band selection for coils and each one of those are uh, tuned I noticed that this uh, wafer switch is got a lot of black in it so we'll get that cleaned up and out here under the bottom you can see there's a wax capacitor right across the line cord that will need to be removed if this ever shorts that's going to put um, you know 120 volts on the case or it's going to trip the breaker depends on which way you have the polarity plugged up on this thing 
uh, <laughs> it would have probably been better, you know, to uh, had it between both line cords if they're using these old wax capacitors. We'll just put a safety capacitor here and that should take care of any of that problem. And you can notice there's uh, several old wax cap uh, capacitors in here that's got to go. And uh, there's a dual electrolytic. These are 20 microfarad and uh, I think it's 150 volts. Yes, 150 volts. So it's got to go. Now, you know, I hear people talk about all the time reforming these caps and uh, trying to use them, but these things are old. They're cheap enough. Go ahead and replace them. So uh, we'll go ahead and start by taking everything off the front and get this front panel off and let's go ahead and see can we get it cleaned up and then we'll get it up and go ahead and clean up the uh, copper chassis here you know this has got a I don't know if this is plated copper or solid copper we'll have to check that and see but we'll get all that cleaned up and get those caps replaced and test those tubes and see where we are on this thing now whenever you're tearing something like this apart it's always good to take pictures of how everything was so when you go to put it back together you get everything back like it was I have downloaded both the instruction manual and the constru construction manual both in uh, one tablet here so not only do we have the instruction manual we have the construction manual because you know these things were sold as kits luckily uh, both manuals are online for this so probably uh, the first thing I'm going to do is try to clean up this uh, front panel and if you notice the washers are still stuck to it and behind this looks like some type of yellowed film and I'm thinking what it was this thing came with a protective uh, plastic coating on it and you know over the years it's come off so uh, we're going to have to pop these washers off and then go ahead and work on this uh, front panel see can we get it nice and clean like it's supposed to be okay after I washed the cover I just got some uh, never do and we've got the front panel bolted to the bench with two screws here and you can see this area right here I've already polished on Just get in there and work this thing real good. See just how much of it we can get to uh, clean up. This panel's a little bit um, rough, it's not slick. It's uh, the aluminum is a little textured. So I'm just going to take a uh, bit of buffing out on it. Like I say, you know, with painted on numbers, you got to be. Uh, real careful so that it doesn't uh, take the uh, lettering off I know it's probably not as good to see in the uh, camera but you can see the shiny part compared to over there which is dual now after we uh, buff this off like this we'll go back with some gojo and uh, clean it with a toothbrush and that'll get all the uh, dirt that's left in this front panel out and should make it look real good and clean so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and 
show you the end process. As you can see, I just smeared a hand cleaner all over it. And then we'll just get in here and take a toothbrush and work this around. And that should lift off any dirt in the uh, finish. Okay, I have the uh, front panel cleaned up and it turned out pretty good. You know, there's still some spots in it that you just can't seem to get out. You know, I could keep polishing and polishing and polishing, but probably get down and start removing uh, lettering off of this and I don't want to do that. But uh, not bad at all. It's come out pretty good. The case, as you can see, She's cleaned up. It's got a couple of little nicks here and there, but you know, not bad at all. Um, we're not going to have to worry about even painting that. It'll look just as good as it needs to. But we'll go ahead and get on with the uh, unit and get that cleaned up. Okay, I have uh, all the shaft of the switch cleaned. I have the uh, chassis cleaned up cleaned the knobs up got them back installed and replaced the RF output jack with a BNC connector so the next thing to do is get in here and tackle replacing all these capacitors and we'll after we get the capacitors placed now this is the last thing that you want to do after you have all the tubes checked, capacitors replaced, any resistors checked, is to go in here and look at this uh, selenium rectifier. Now, selenium rectifiers is no ways as efficient as your typical diode, and we'll replace this with a poly of 1N 4007. But then we'll have to put a series resistor also in line. Now it has one, but it's after the capacitor. So we want to put a series resistor in between the capacitor and the uh, diode. And you want full load on this when you're doing that. So we're looking here at our schematic and you can see a line cord coming in. One side goes through the off on switch into one side the transformer. And the other side the line cord just goes directly to the transformer. This um, AC power line is not grounded to the chassis of this unit. Here you can see CR1. Then there's our capacitor. And then there's R1 which is a series resistor also. But our target voltage here is 110 volts. Now we want to keep this at about 110 volts or somewhere as close as possible. So when we change this selenium rectifier to a silicon diode, the voltage is probably going to go up. So we'll have to come here and put a resistor to drop it to get the voltage back down to where it needs to be. But we want to do that after all the caps are placed resistors are checked out so that way the load will be stable because you always want a full load on it whenever you're checking the uh, the voltage off after that uh, selenium rectifier so after everything is replaced we'll go in we'll see what the voltage is with and actually it's 125 volts here I didn't see that and then this here drops it down to 110 so our target voltage will be 125 this resistor here will drop the rest of it to 110. So now I'm going to go ahead and get all these caps out and go ahead and get them replaced. There's no need of me showing you how to replace the capacitor. I think at this point we pretty much know how to do that. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, get those changed out. And when you come back we should have it all together. Then we can start doing some testing and then go through the alignment procedure. 
Okay, all the caps are replaced. Controls are cleaned. If you notice, I've got the uh, two main filter caps just kind of tacked in. And that's because uh, we just want to check the voltages. See where the voltage is at. And uh, you know, we should have 125 volts here. And 110 volts over here on this side of the uh, resistor. So, you know, that'll tell us where our selenium rectifier is at. Then we can work on uh, changing that out and uh, mount the caps like it's supposed to and get the correct resistors in it to put the voltage where it needs to be. Okay, I'm power the unit up. I'll let the uh, load warm up just a minute. And we'll come down here on the ground tab. We'll check just off the selenium rectifier. And we're checking 145 volts. And that should be 125. And over on this side, we had 136 volts. And we should be at 110. So, uh, you know, line voltage could be a problem. Um, let's check our line voltage today. Oh, you dummy. Forgot to put it back on AC. One of these days, I'm going to get me a nice fluke auto range of meter. And we have about 122 volts today. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to go ahead and get that uh, selenium rectifier out. We'll put us a terminal strip in there. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so what I had to do was put two resistors. These are 5 watt, 5, uh, 5K resistors. So it's a total of 2.5K in series with the diode and we'll go to our DC voltage and look at it we have roughly 112 volts and on the other side we had about 104 volts so about 6 volts low here and about 10-12 volts low there now that is okay now, I want you to remember that when this thing was built, line voltage ran about 115 volts. So, if we'll take this and plug this into the variac, and we'll go to AC voltage. You can see we're about 121 volts now. Earlier we was at 123. I'll bring this down to about 115 volts. That would have been the voltage of the time error. And then we'll go back to DC. And we'll look at what the uh, voltage is now. Coming off the resistors are about 106 volts. And on the other side, we're at 99 volts. So, you know, uh, your line voltage is going to have a lot to play in this. I say it's taking 2.5K to get this down to a level close to where it needs to be. Now, you can take a decade box and put in and fine-tune this. To compensate for... Uh, you know the needed voltage you'll have to add these resistors now I've seen a lot of people say you know you don't have to but as you can see when we first started out there was a lot of voltage across this thing and our caps ain't but 160 volts um, that's 10 volts higher than what it called for in the original circuit and you saw to begin with it was running up at about 160 170 volts now 
take in mind that you know our voltage today is over 120 volts so it's going to bring everything up now you could go in and tear the transformer apart and you know add a turn remove a turn or whatever until you get the output of the transformer where you need to be but we'll uh, use these resistors for now then I'll go back and probably put a uh, metalized flange resistor to the back of the case just to uh, you know absorb any heat now another thing is a lot of equipment that runs selenium rectifiers will have many tubes in it this only has two so the load on this is going to be very very low it's not going to be a big load on this to start with to pull that voltage down so we'll have to go with this for right now and go ahead and get everything else tested out and I'll have to order I don't think I have one in stock I'll probably have to order a uh, power resistor that has a flange so I can bolt it here on the back okay I'm getting here to get ready to start doing some testing on our ICO 324 and I kind of located the problem I didn't see before until I got in and started looking real good you can see there's a resistor there that has been burnt and you know this was the RF in output jack and I'm looking you can't see that can you but yeah here's our RF output jack and it comes in and goes to this switch and this switch sets high medium and low and if you look at this resistor here there we go that's a 470 ohm resistor and it has been smoked out so if we fall off schematic you can see this is the uh, where it comes out through the blocking cap and comes into R4 and that is the resistor that is burnt now probably somebody has injected something back into this and it took out this resistor but we're going to have to test these other resistors just to make sure that they're okay and replace all four. So I uh, went ahead and took these two resistors loose off of this terminal so we can go ahead and read because a lot of these series resistors are in series parallel configuration and you can't read a resistor like that so we had to take two of them loose. But I'm going to go ahead and check these resistors since that one is blown and see where we're at. So we'll check the first 47 ohm resistor. And she's at 66, 65 ohms. We'll check the second one. And it's around 77 ohms. Then the other 470 ohm that's not blown into checks open so both of these are on the high this one here is twice its value this one here is about 30 35 percent higher and this 470 is completely open not surprising being that it is uh, in direct in series with the one that's blown apart so you know whatever it was came in through the BNC jack went through this resistor took this one out and probably blown this one open so I'll go ahead and get those replaced. Okay, I got the uh, 47 ohms replaced and the 470 ohms replaced. And I know you're going to see that these are replaced back with half watt components, but the two 470s are replaced back. Instead of half watt, I went with quarter watt. So what's the reasoning behind that? Well, the guy that's getting this piece of equipment will be using it for RF work 
and if he transmits into it it's a good chances you know we don't want the uh, signal to go fall up hopefully the blocking cap will stop it but these resistors will blow a lot easier and keep from uh, damaging anything any further okay uh, went ahead and got everything tied in got the capacitors where they should lay at in here and I took out those two resistors and went back with a 2200 on 5 watt carbon comp resistor and I've had this thing running for about 30 minutes and it's cold as a cucumber so there's no problem with heat I do mount it up against the uh, back panel in case it does get warm it could absorb some of the heat but now on our secondary here you can see we have our 110 volts right where it needs to be uh, we're a little bit low here about 119 118 so we're you know five or six volts low but that shouldn't be a problem but uh, looks like the uh, electrical restoration is complete as far as we can see now the next thing we'll need to do is go in and start testing and aligning and see where she's at let's go ahead and give you a closer view here you see how I mounted the resistor right up against the back wall now that we have the uh, generator all recapped and all the resistors replaced it's time to start doing a little testing now I've got it on band A we'll make sure the modulation is turned all the way down we'll go on RF fine to max and RF course to max and let's uh, set the generator at about 300 kilocycles I'll go over here to the IFR and we'll set it for 300 kilocycles and you can see uh, we do it exactly on the uh, 300 mark here on the 324 yeah, she's exactly on 300 here and the IFR is showing about 9 kilocycles off frequency turn the tuning dial just a little bit That's dead on frequency, and now we're on about 280. So we're about 20 kilocycles off on the dial. And you can see we do have a full signal over there. And that is unattenuated. We'll go over here to the spectrum analyzer. It's also hooked up. I'll set the frequency for 300 kilocycles. And we'll go to peak. And I have a 20 dB attenuator in line on the frequency counter. We're showing about minus 28.3 dBm. I'm going to set this back on 300 on the dial. And what we're going to do, now that I have that on 300, is come here to coil A and we're going to adjust that on frequency. So I'm going to use a um, ceramic tuning stick. And we're going to come right here on coil A and we're going to adjust that and see if can't we get the uh, frequency on to where it should be which is going to be 300 kilohertz 
and I can look at the spectrum analyzer also while doing this make sure we're turning it the right way there we go we're coming up and we're right on 300 kilohertz on band A Take the spectrum analyzer she looks dead on frequency with it so they correspond with each other okay now what we need to do is go to band B and band B will be 400 kilohertz to 1.2 megahertz so we're going to come here on about 800 kilohertz open the dial we'll set the IFR for 800 kilohertz we'll get RF and we'll put in 0.800 we'll go back to 10 kilohertz off We'll go over to the uh, spectrum analyzer on the Rigol. Let's put in frequency 800 kilohertz. And we'll peak that. And yes, she's off too. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, come here to call B and we'll adjust it. See, can't we bring it on frequency? You can tell when you're going the wrong way. You can see the spike move away from the center. We just turn it till we start going back. that when you're tuning these you keep your fingers away from the coil we'll drop this down to 3 kilohertz and have a look at it that's looking real good spectrum analyzer and we can see we got our peak right at the top on 800 kilohertz it's about minus 32 dBm with the 20 dB attenuator in there <clears throat> now we'll move over to band C which will be 1.2 2 megahertz to 3.5 megahertz and we're going to set it for 2.5 megahertz and we'll dial in all the way up 2.5 megahertz On C, and you can see that is way off. Two point five megahertz. Yes, you can also see that uh, on the Rigol, the center frequency should be here, and this way over here. If we put a peak on that, we're at two point three 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 megahertz. see 
go ahead and we'll close up our fan width a little bit and we should be able to pour this over past it a little bit touchy there we go band C is now on frequency and hit the right goal we can see the frequency is at 2.5 megahertz we got our peak indicator up right at the very top she's right on frequency where she needs to be seems pretty stable too next one will be band D which is 3.5 to 11 we're going to set it at 7 megahertz about sent away <clears throat> come over here and set the IFR for 7.000 megahertz and you can see just off to the side of the screen there we'll come to the fourth coil Let's see, we'll peek it out. Looking again at our spectrum analyzer. You can see we at 7.000 megahertz. And our peak is right on the top. I'm really amazed at just how well this unit is uh, calibrating. It's so well that it's almost scary. <laughs> All right, we'll move to band E, which would be 11 to 37. We'll set it for about 20 megahertz. Get that right under the window there. That one's not working, but you can see it there just to the right of the screen. We'll go to core E. Move it over. down to three kilohertz this one is a little bit touchy Go. 
them was a little touchy. But as you can see, we're dead on 20 megahertz. Still around the uh, minus 31, just hitting minus 32 dBm. It's holding uh, its output very well across the whole spectrum so far. <clears throat> so if you notice on here that uh, we got band A, B, C, D, E, there is no coil for band F, which is. 100 to 430 megahertz there is no adjustment at all for that band and you got to remember now it, we are working off of harmonics here so uh, we'll go to band F anyway I'm gonna go to about 200 megahertz just to make sure that and F is working and somewhere close to where we need to be 200.0 yeah. you see we have a signal there and uh, let's see if I can show you so we're real close you see a uh, line right there and 200 is just off a little bit, probably about 5 or 6 KC's, but it's close enough. So now what I want to do is verify that our um, RF course is working correctly. We should have about 20 dBs between each setting from low, medium and high. And we're putting a 10 megahertz signal into the uh, spectrum analyzer. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the fine down to we're at exactly 30 dBm. I'll tell you what, we'll set it for 31 dBm. Right, that's about as close as I can get it. And we're on high, so we're going to drop down to medium that's 47 minus 47 then we'll drop to low and minus 67 the only other test we need to do now is check to see if uh, this thing is putting out modulation and I'm not going to worry about uh, testing the frequency of it you know you can pretty much tell if it's a supposed to be a 400 kilohertz tone we'll set the uh, generator to AF out internal modulation it looks like the IFR is reading about 500 kilohertz but this isn't an accurate test so it is putting out the tone and it sounds like it's very close um, maybe later on in another video we'll do some testing on that I'll just have to set up some different stuff to do that but uh, it seems to be working so there you go the ICO 324 is all back together working like it should be now one thing you didn't see me do was add a fuse holder I will be putting a fuse holder in the back of it I have ordered some they have not come in yet expected them this weekend so I'll get the uh, fuse holder installed so it'll be protected with a fuse and uh, and I'll be calling our buddy up and telling them to come pick it up and we'll use that money for other projects here in the shop so we got a lot more to go through I've got several radios here on the bench that I'm working through we have the uh, old helicopters we're going through a couple of uh, 940s the SPE 36 is here on the bench working on that this week 
trying to get that going so we've got a lot to do come in up in the near future um, sorry for not getting many videos out lately it's just been uh, you know a lot going on here with work family and uh, medical problems but we're getting through it but anyway uh, hope you enjoyed it As you can see uh, wasn't very hard didn't have to do any troubleshooting on this uh, basically everything that we saw we saw it while we had it apart and the unit seems to be working fine so uh, until next time we'll see you in the next video bye now